Uh, hello. Um, my name's Christian Van Vuren. Uh, I might just say, firstly, that I feel uh, very privileged and highly underqualified to be here today. Um, what I do is um, make stuff for the internet. It's hard if people say, kind of, what do you do? It's difficult to put a name to it, but it's, um, it's acting, directing, writing, making stuff, putting it online, and, um, and I suppose what I do is, is be really good at clinging on to people that are better at what I do than I am. Um, and that's, for the most part, been my brother Connor, um, who's a wonderful writer, and my good friend Nick Bosher, who's one of the brains behind um, Beach Daz and a suspicious internet character called Trent from Punchy, that some Australian people might know. Um, I, I cannot agree more with what Bevan was saying earlier about craft being um, really important. Uh, I think that one of the interesting things about people that are creating stuff now is that technology has changed so much that you really get an opportunity to grab a camera and um, pull together friends and shoot hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of stuff to help um, refine your own craft. And, and for us, this started kind of three years ago. Uh, I was working for a, a media company called JC Deco at the time, selling billboards and um, sitting at a, at a client lunch where I started coughing blood. I thought that uh, I'd been bitten by a zombie or had some kind of vampire uh, affliction because um, the only times I'd ever seen anyone cough blood was in films like Walking Dead or, or you know, 17th century prostitutes. It turned out that I had tuberculosis, so that's kind of the prostitute version. Um, and um, I spent six months quarantined in hospital and another 18 months going to hospital every day. And during this process, uh, made a video that I put on YouTube and that video um, got a bunch of hits, um, went viral-ish, um, and it, that kind of allowed me um, creatively to escape my hospital room for the time that I was in there. Anyway, um, really got a taste for making things and then, like I said, hooked up with my brother Connor and, and some other friends and just started making things online and, and seeing how they went. Um, I'm here talking about uh, Australian stories and most particularly multi-platform storytelling. And I think one of the things that's important to touch on around, around Australian stories and, and for me what the internet, if it's done anything for Australian storytelling, it's removed the, the geographical barriers of the country that we're in. Um, we are not an island on the internet. Um, anything that you create can be watched and viewed by anyone all around the world and they're not, they don't seem to be particularly interested in, in red dust and, um, you know, the outback. They seem to be interested in stories of the city and stories of where we live. And I think that's actually a very re relevant point because 90% of Australians live in capital cities and for a long time Australian storytelling um, has, has kind of focused on what you might think that picture of Australia is of the, the broad landscapes and, and red soil and and the rest of it, but we're, we're all, the reason we're, in, we're into the entertainment that we're in, uh, and which is, you know, a lot of people watch, watch American stuff or watch British stuff, is because it's based in capital cities, it's these stories of, of real people uh, engaging in very similar lifestyles to what we have. I did a quick search of, like, Australian culture. We've, we've talked about a, uh, Australian culture a bit. And it's funny, like, you know, Australian culture is, is larrikinism, giving everyone a fair go having a laugh and a beer with mates, adopting a, a relaxed and informal lifestyle. Somebody shouts you a beer, you shout one back. That's not a culture. They're just nice things to do that feel good and are fun. Um, it, outside of the obviously very rich and deep indigenous culture that Australia's got, I mean, a modern culture, we're such a young country that our modern culture is, is actually just one of, of nice things to do. And, and I think... Um, I think with Australian stories, like it's it's really important that we're that we're all kind of looking at this the modern you know inner suburban city living lifestyle that most most Australians actually live in. We created a web series called Bondi Hipsters. Um, the the core comedic idea behind this and uh, was kind of that um, that there's comedy to be found in people that think they're making the world a better place whilst being part of the problem. Um, and I think we've all got, you know, we'd all know people or, or all have friends who perhaps take their Monday to Friday in a very kind of strict, 
organic, I've got to eat right, got to live right kind of way, but then on Saturdays and Sundays, you know, it might help themselves to a couple of cases of beer and potentially a bag of cocaine, if you're so inclined. And that's, th that's what this kind of story, we wanted to play on just how contradictive that lifestyle was. And um, one of the things for us about this show is like what a lot of people don't know, we've, we've made 40 episodes of this online. Um, we've probably, ap apart from one partnership we had with Google where we got to go to the London Olympics and shoot a bunch of stuff over in London, we've probably only ever shot for four or five weekends and we've been able to make 40-odd episodes. Um, and when we came up with this idea, a lot of what we had to think about was the format in which we wanted to produce the show. So we decided that of that core comedy idea, something that would actually really help us communicate that was like a mockumentary-style format. Because we could see these characters saying one thing and then pitch that against you know, footage of them doing the complete opposite. Um, but also, from a production point of view, we had no money, we just had our mates and, you know, favours that we could ask from people, but it really meant that we could just shoot loads and loads of footage of these two dicks sitting on a couch, talking a lot, and then um, just go out where and when appropriate and shoot extra bits and pieces of footage around that. Um, and for us, it's, it was, you know, we've come to a lot of these type conferences where you hear Google have some great insight, YouTube and Google have some great insight as to the types of things that you can do to help grow and sustain an audience, um, such as you know weekly releases, making making releases regular so that your audience know when they're going to come out, um, engaging with them through the comments and annotations. And for Bondi Hipsters, for us was was something that we applied all those learnings to and actually had a bit of a strategy in the way that we released it. We um, put out an initial block of content, about 10 or 12 videos, and then decided that we'd release a comedy music video um, because they tend to be more shareable online that would then push back to the other content that we had living there and, um, and then we could just kind of continue to, to create regular content around that. Um, my babies are cute, eh? They're pretty cute. Um, Multi-format storytelling, I, I like to look at this subject in... In not just saying that you're, you know, you're telling stories through potentially television or film and then through online content um, and social media, but I really think this thing of like that social engagement is really not just a way to market an existing entertainment property or a way to um, get you know, extra likes for a particular entertainment property, but it's actually a way to have characters communicate online and an actual way to have additional stories being told that really fill out that world of your characters. Um, for us, from the start, Bondi Hipsters was always something that we looked at as a way to, here's something we can shoot cheaply, put out regularly, that will establish our two main characters, build a world for those characters, um, build an audience, establish their belief systems, get people to know these characters, so that in the meantime, if, if an opportunity arises for us to take that to a longer format situation, then we've we've got something to show, we've built an audience for it, people know it, we've got a certain amount of likes on Facebook, we've got this YouTube following, and it just kind of becomes a, all part of the case study and all part of, you know, that goes into, alongside the writing craft. Um, coming back to what Bevan said, you know, there's, there's a lot of creators out there on the internet who make stuff that gathers an audience, but then, you know, if a network calls them up and says, have you got a TV show for this, or have you, a film company says, have you got a film around this, and they can't, they haven't done the work or haven't been able to put in the time or, or the craft or, or learnt from, put, surrounded themselves by people who know better than them to be able to learn what it takes to tell that story in a longer format, then that opportunity will probably actually never come about. But um, the great thing now is that there's, you know, the funding bodies um, locally and, and overseas are recognising these audiences that people grow online and, um, and actually giving them an opportunity to, to create based on, on what they've achieved. Um, I think with multi-format storytelling, it's also really important to, you know, not to just put out content. I mean, particularly around, like, if you've got a drama show or a comedy show, is, like, you can't really look at this space um, in a way that you're creating content with the same production model that you've got um, through the TV show itself. I mean, all the way back from scripting stage, like, things need to be written specifically for the online world. They need to be written specifically for, um, it's not just short format, but if you want to have shorter format pieces, they need to be written like that, have a, 
a little beginning, middle, and an end within that piece of content. Um, that, you know, you need to be looking at what works online. Things like, you know, music, musical comedy videos, or things like um, timely viral pieces, or things like, you know, whatever's current at the time. Twelve minutes is going really quickly. Um, the other thing that I that I think is really cool about you know web series and multi-format storytelling is it's actually opened up this whole new opportunity for people to pilot ideas online, and anyone with a great idea can actually put the hard work in, gather friends, put that online, build an audience for it, and treat that like a pilot. I mean, I'm I can only assume, a, a like I said, very limited experience in this space, but I can I can only assume that th th it is really. Um, a bad use of money to make hundreds and hundreds of pilots that never see the light of day and that just sit on shelves somewhere. Um, and what this online space will probably start to do is start to allow investors and, um, and networks and film companies to actually make stuff that's going to get seen, that gets put out online, that's specifically written for shorter formats so that they can build an audience for something before they make the decision whether or not to turn it into a TV show. And the rules around that storytelling um, are a little bit up in the open. I mean, all the main, you know, all those main things that have been classic storytelling rules of like having great characters that have got real ticks, irks, problems, depth, um, building a, a world and thrusts for those characters, and having a story that propels those characters and gets people behind them are obviously still very important things. But that structural thing has changed. You can have content of different lengths, three minute, seven minute, 15 minute, 22 minute models can all be extremely successful online. You can write for however is best for those characters and for that world that you're creating or for the content that you're creating. And it's so new that those, those things are still changing. Um, we use YouTube personally, not as a way, I mean, some people say, again, on the tradition production model that it's hard to take that production spend and then earn the same amount of money that you spent on it in advertising revenue. But I think you need to look, when you're creating this multi-format content, you need to look at it in a way that this is actually an investment. We use YouTube, we've poured hours of our own time and hours of our own content into YouTube as an investment in that it's, we're growing an audience in our own creations, we're establishing the right to own our own creations for when we take those things further and have conversations with, with networks. And you're also, you're actually, you know, um, you're growing a real audience base that is real data for you to, to move forward with. Uh, maybe the, the marketing spend is a better way to be funding um, content than looking at just out of, you know, straight out of your production budgets. Um, and finally, there is a massive evolution that's taking place, and I think it all comes down to money used to give you access to audience, and now I think audience gives you access to money. Um, and that's a very kind of basic thing, but it's, um, you know, there's these changes where, where, in the same thing in the music industry, the A&R people aren't kind of wandering around as often and looking at gigs in a pub. Um, they're kind of watching the internet for, for the next big thing. In the same way, in, in this area of storytelling and entertainment, there's US agents and US networks and US film companies that are really closely trawling the internet and watching the internet for things that they feel like they might be able to exploit, particularly if they've built an audience. And, um, you know, for people that might have their own idea or for networks that, that have got a content idea around a particular show, if, if you start to look at it as in that being this you know, whatever's invested in creating this content, doing it in a way that's really scripted for the internet space, uh, is, is going to potentially open up your show to a massive global audience. Um, and if your storytelling has been done in a way that those stories are great because they're great stories, not just because they're typically Australian, then you're going to find that you probably get a lot more opportunity for global exploitation of the stuff that you're creating. Um, and I'm highly underqualified to say any of that. So, um, But thank you. Cheers. 12 minutes is up.